please welcome Juan Arraita del Sistema Universitario Ana Geméndez. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I'm, we are going to talk about a project that uh, happened in the span of 14 years. And, uh, this is a Modern Institution for Excellence. Uh, Modern Institution for Excellence. Okay. Uh, this is the outline we have for today. Uh, next. Uh, normally, uh, I had uh, uh, to disseminate this, uh, uh, this project in the United States abroad, so I just tell them where we are. Okay, next. Uh, where is Puerto Rico and uh, where is uh, oh, the university campus? And uh, this was initiative, was a, a, a joint initiative by two federal agencies, NASA and NSF. Uh, they select six institutions for this, uh, this competition. Next. Uh, we have uh, Oglala, that is a, a, an, uh, it's a Native American institution. We have Bowie State and Spelma and Xavier that are uh, African American, and we had two Hispanic institutions, uh, University of Texas El Paso and Universidad Metropolitana. So we are from the University of Metropolitana. Uh, and it was a joint uh, venture, okay? So the sponsorship for, uh, for Spelma and Bowie was NASA, and for, uh, for NSF, we have uh, Xavier, uh, UTEP, and University of uh, and UMET. So that's why we received the money out of uh, NSF. All right. Those uh, were the PIs for this project. We have six PIs. And the rationale for this, uh, this uh, uh, program, it's not a proposal, it's a program, is uh, that we can uh, go into the, the population, minority institutions, to search for people who are interested in STEM education. So that was the rationale. So we had the rationale of Hispanic and green, African American, and Native American. That's the location of, of the school, okay? Uh, if we target bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD in this ethnicity, we will have the following information. Got this? Go. Uh, bachelor's degree, you see, we have probably very low percentage of the total bachelor's degree award in STEM for minorities. Next. The same is for master degrees, even lower, lower numbers. The third one is for PhD, right? Actually, uh, that's a that's number. But if you, you go into the population, next, you go to the population, the population Hispanic especially is increasing, okay? So, uh, so even if we have very low numbers, bachelor, master, and PhD, and the population increasing, so an investment in this particular area is really uh, very welcomed by the funding agencies. Next. Okay, we had, a, a, in this particular case, uh, in UMED, we developed what we call a, a pipeline from pre-college to PhD. Okay, so, we had a, a, an initiative at the pre-college level. Uh, the second is at the graduate level. And also, in order to achieve success for those two areas, well, we had to have a curriculum development. We had to have a faculty development mm -hmm. also, physical infrastructure, and also STEM graduate school and employment initiative. So the model is really belong and is about all these, those areas. Next. Okay, we put together a corporate agreement with NSF for, it's a long history with NSF when we started this program in uh, 1995, uh, okay? Yeah. Next. Uh, the amount of money invest, it was really big. In total, the combination NASA and uh, NSF invest $150 million in this initiative in all the institution. So our model start with at the pre-college level. It goes into uh, undergraduate, and we just prepare students for the PhD track. So that was essentially what we, we 
we did. Next. Uh, this is investment. We have three phases, and we got about $25 million in the span of at least about 14 years. Next. Uh, we have to see how was uh, UMED at the beginning of this grant. So we better get a few, a few words about Next. Next. Yeah, we have, at that particular time, UMED has only two bachelor's degrees. Uh, bachelor's in computer science and biology. The enrollment was really limited. And the, the infrastructure we have, we have faculty, only eight faculty, and five PhD out of those eight, okay? And the vision and undergraduate, very few students have opportunities to do uh, research in national laboratories. At to we didn't have the, the, uh, the laboratories, necessary laboratories to do it. The mission is educational opportunities for low income and disadvantaged students. And we made at that particular time was a teaching institution, just a teaching institution. Next. So the contribution of this program, let's go next. Uh, we have uh, $2.5 million per year. So it's a lot of money. So we start putting together an infrastructure, laboratory, creation, and enhancement at all levels. Curriculum enhancement also, because we expand the offer, okay? And something that we did really uh, and good was a pre-college research program at the pre-college and undergraduate level. So that was focused. Also, we had uh, funding for a scholarship, student support, and also just to put this the kid, a competitive kid, into graduate school. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. These are the phases, and we start with two programs, a bachelor's degree, and we develop several other, like uh, chemistry, environmental uh, science, applied mathematics, applied physics, brain engineering, okay, and cellular molecular biology. Those, those were the develop, we, we just made a development. Next. Uh, in faculty enhancement, uh, we hire for a period of about 14 years, 10 new PhD funded directly by NSF. Chemistry, mathematics, cellular molecular biology, environmental science, physics, and, com and computer science. Mm -hmm. And undergraduate, we just uh, develop a scholarship, about 120 scholarship per year, okay, for, st for the best student. Next. Student support, we create a, a center with tutoring, mentoring, counseling, critical thinking, problem solving, language skill, and ethics. Language skill, uh, we, we focus mainly in English, okay? The students we got, uh, they are now really well prepared in English, so, so English was really a, a, a challenge. Uh, the bridge to graduate school also was something new at uh, Armed, okay? So we did a lot of uh, seminars, uh, why to go to graduate school convinced the, the parent and the student to do that, and uh, graduate school orientation, selection, preparation for graduate regular examination, uh, technical writing workshop, and uh, application process. So that was uh, was a new a new avenue, okay, for a new, for a teaching institution. Next, uh, let's go to the next one. I'm going to explain a little bit. You see the main motivation to do that. It's just a student motivation. That was really critical in terms of success. And, and our objective is competitiveness. So we can prepare students to go to the top school in the nation, okay? And that was the objective with all the stuff we do in, uh, in the program. Next. Okay, the, the UMED Research and Peer Mentor Program really was, it was the center of everything. So the students really were tied to this development. So that's the way we did it. Next. Uh, next. Okay, let's start with the pre-college. The pre-college, we started a program, 16 week immersion program on Saturdays. So we, we taught how to do research to pre-college. And this is a very successful program because out of a, uh, the, the student we impacted, we impacted thousands of students. And uh, everybody 
almost 95% of the impacted students, they went to college. Okay, they were enrolled. Not everybody enrolled in STEM, but everybody went to college. So that was the first one. Next. Next one. So what, how, how we started? We started with a, a, an orientation program done by some mentors. I started working with, with faculty from UMED and the new faculty we hired, the new PhD. Okay, next. Uh, this is the first day on orientation. That was massive, really, because we have probably 100, 120 kids per semester in this program. Next. And these are the projects we develop in the different areas, okay? Uh, we are talking about pre-college, okay? Pre-college. This is very advanced um, for the student and for everybody. Next. Uh, normally what we have, you see we have, this is a new one because it's December 2016. And uh, at the beginning we had a little different, but this is really the agenda we have. We start with a, an orientation and we finish with a pre-college research symposium. So they have to be able to develop every skill during this particular process. Next. Yes, uh, the academy really, you see, the main objective of this is to motivate talented students. I will say motivated students instead of talented. Because you can, you can become talent if you are motivated to do things. And we did hands-on research. Okay, next. Uh, uh, we did it during the semester. Because during the summer, you see, after the program, uh, with other grant, we did it also in the United States during the summer. Okay, during the during the semester we did it in Puerto Rico. During the summer we did it in the United States. Next, these are some highlights of the students doing research in different fields. Okay, next. Uh, the main emphasis for this one was scientific methodology. That was the main target. So we were asking the student to do. Uh, question, question in different areas, okay? I'm trying to develop, a, you see, a, an hypothesis. Trying to test the hypothesis and trying to do the process, okay? In terms of developing some result. Now, okay, uh, we can do uh, research at the level of reading material, but this one was at the top, the top level. So we had to get into the to the state of the art of the, the different fields. And the students just, just start learning that. Next one. So we we taught them how to write an effective abstract. Because that's very, very important and very key. And that was something one of the samples we have. Okay. Initially we have a group of students, but uh, next. But uh, we developed during the process that group is not good enough. It has to be individual project. So that's, that's something that we, we discovered. Okay, next. Uh, we tried to, and we did it, posted scientific portal presentation. So we taught them how, how to develop that and what a competitive poster has to have. And those are the areas that they had to have. Next. Uh, the structure, it can be different, but this is, this is a normal structure of a poster. Okay, next. This is one poster that uh, it was developed not by my student here, but my student in China. This program is, I have a program in China. Same program I developed in Puerto Rico in China. So this is in English, next. And the poster in Mandarin is there also. So the communication was for the few people who understood English in China, but the general population doesn't understand English, so it had to be in Mandarin. Okay, so that was the reason. Next. Also, I told you that during the summer, the student really they did research in the United States. Normally six, seven weeks doing research in the top institution, MIT is there, University of Vermont, and other universities, and, uh, and those are the, just one summer. Okay, next. And these are the number of students we impacted and also the project, research project developed. 
Okay? That's, a, that's a quite significant. And this is because after the, this particular grant, I had two other grants, and this is the combination. Uh, one in mathematics and the other in computer science. So we span up to from 2000 to 2014. Next. Well, something very interesting when this kid develop uh, their uh, research uh, is, a, is a, we have to disseminate that. And we do the dissemination is impossible. Prepare especially for pre-college. Okay, that's, that's our, the numbers, participant. Okay, if we have been a speaker, we had we a professional symposium. Next. And these are something, or uh, proceedings, okay? We develop proceedings, everything is published, okay? Uh, so that's 2014, but we have from 2000 up to that year. Next. And we do evaluation, you see? The each quarter has to be evaluated by professionals. So that's the format for evaluation. We have to be very specific about scientific merit and knowledge and all the other uh, updated that uh, the student need to have. And this is in English. So it has to be in English, the, the conversation with the, with the evaluators, okay? So the student really learn about it, about the project, and they had to defend the project in English, okay? And these are some highlights of the, the symposium, okay? Thanks. Uh, another highlight, all right? Uh, also, we had the award ceremonies, and those are the students with the award ceremonies, okay? Next. Now, the undergraduate program, that's the other part. Yeah, we did it mainly during the summer, because during the, during the academic year, the students were concentrated in their, in their GPA in their, in their courses, okay? So we pushed them just to be focused in doing their courses. During the summer, we sent it to national laboratories, uh, institutions, and we had a network. Normally, the, the summer for the undergraduate were between eight to 10 weeks. Okay, next. Um, well, we had MIE institution, so we send students to, to, let's say, UTEC. We send students also to Bui and to other institutions. But in addition to that, we had an extended network, okay, with other institutions. Uh, the project uh, we developed with them were all this, this, this type of project, okay, samples, thanks. And of course, the, the dissemination of those particular projects uh, for the summer happened here in, in September, all the September, October, September, right? We had a symposium. We call it initially undergraduate research symposium, and uh, later we call it Agnos Research Symposium. Thanks. Yeah, and these are some of the institutions that we we have joined a, a collaboration, and we start well, around here. Even with U.S. Virgin Island, we have connectivity. All right. Next, and uh, this is our highlight of some of my students in the in the undergraduate research symposium here in Puerto Rico. All right. Um, the attendance probably 300 and oral presentation over 100 and uh, oral and poster presentations. So this is 2006. Thanks. Uh, highlight. So it's a very professional way of developing the student. Next. Uh, okay, if we talk, yeah, okay, if we talk about the achievement for numbers for this program. You see, we have uh, first about 260% increase in the enrollment, okay, in, in UMET, okay? O opportunities for a scholarship, of course, we didn't have my scholarship at the beginning, we had up to 100 and 120. Increase the number of BS awarded 400%, really, that was huge, huge investment for, for the institution. Next, uh, graduate. We didn't uh, send anybody to graduate school when we start, and we just sent more than 10 per year, really, in 2004 at that level, all right? And opportunities, a, a great opportunity, uh, undergraduate research experience 
for the student. Increase, we increase the competitiveness of our student very, very much because our first graduate, really, in graduate school was awarded in mathematics in Cornell University. Okay, so we prepare students really. I will show you that, the picture. Next. Okay, that's at the enrollment of the program, Admit. Next. And uh, these are some highlights of the program. The, normally we had uh, very important mentors. Okay, I'm, I'm a US presidential, a lot of US presidential mentors are, uh, came here to just to mentor the student. Next. And this is the number uh, uh, of students participating in, in uh, summer programs. So it's, it's a huge, huge amount of students. Okay, next. And this also, this program not only uh, was part of the United States, but we also have relation with Europe, especially with, with Spain, okay? Over 60 or 70 students just traveled to different locations, uh, mainly to Spain. Next. Also, I had a relation with the Fulbright. I'm a Fulbright, personally. So we have, for, for mentorship, visiting scholars from different countries a lot. Over 120. We have 120 during all these years. OK, next. And this is the network with the United States. In those locations, we send students. OK, next. And those are the mentors, my relation with different mentors. OK, next. Around the world, we have many countries, right? And those are the mentors we had relation with. Next. And these are the international students with experience. And uh, this is in terms of numbers for the period of 96, okay? How many opportunities we, we provide? Close to over 600 opportunities. Next. These are the numbers where we send the student. Next. Uh, also, the student, when they have to see relation with the top university, they have pretty competitive project. So we have, in addition to the meetings here in Puerto Rico, we have national meetings. We send students to ACS national meeting, uh, CAMP, uh, ABRACAM, uh, and other institutions, uh, GLA institution, next, okay? All the conference. Those are conference, NCAR, uh, SACNAS, those are material research society in Boston, people in, in physics. Next. Uh, normally, with the project they develop through their, uh, their experience, where they were winners at, at the national level. So we have uh, winners in SACNAS and uh, another of the conference. Almost every year we had SACNAS winners. Next. Okay, other conference, okay, it's, uh, those, all those people that are, are, are seeing here, you see, as an undergrad, they are all PhD now. Okay, I will show you the numbers and, and the faces. Next. Uh, more people really, all winners of conference, more. Okay, next. More, those are just to show the, the faces of people, next. Next, yes, or all students, winners, winners, more, 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 yes, more. And also something very important, you see, we were able to develop uh, peer review publications. So these are the publications. This is uh, one of the students, okay, he has a PhD in mathematics out of Aris, uh, Arizona State University, and he started uh, doing research with faculty at UMED, and uh, in addition with other faculty for Arizona State University. Next, another. Uh, this is Fabio, that was my first PhD out of Cornell with uh, Carlos Castillo Chavez. He was his mentor. Next. Uh, this is uh, Terani, also Arizona State University, is in chemistry. Uh, also PhD, next. Uh, the priest to graduate school, that, that was something really a very important part of this particular program. And uh, out of all the MIEs 
You see, we were the first one in terms of uh, the number of students and the quality of, uh, of their outcome, okay? So this was very important. Uh, and the pre-college gave us a really good, good start in terms of uh, preparing uh, the base for the next generation of scientists. So next. Uh, and this is Fabio, and these are my two first uh, PhD in uh, mathematics, and, uh, and the other uh, student, she is uh, a family here from Puerto Rico, okay, and, uh, at the University of Puerto Rico. Next. We have over 65 PhD and doctoral, doctoral students, okay, with their degrees out of this program. This, these are the faces. Next. There's some more faces, this is about 60. And we did a lot of dissemination, really. Uh, we had a conference in 2006, okay, about the, this experience here in Puerto Rico. Next. We do have for dissemination a homepage about the program, so you can visit that, it's still, it's still on. Next. Well, uh, since uh, this is an NSF managed uh, program, uh, I had the US Presidential Award in, uh, uh, in Science, Mathematics, and Engineering mentoring, okay? And I had the privilege to be at the White House. Next. Shaking hands with the president. That's it. So that's the, one of the uh, great achievements for the program. Next. Uh, in addition to that program, Okay, I told you that I have additional money from NSF, different grant, okay, next. These are part of the grants, next. And we have probably over $80 million in the, in the span of 20 years for the institution. A teaching institution that started in 1995, uh, and we transformed the institution into a, a, an undergraduate research institution, very competitive. And I would like to thank the uh, National Science Foundation and Universidad Metropolitana and uh, Inter-American University of Puerto Rico for giving me the opportunity to present this to you. And uh, next, you have any questions? Got it? Next. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and next. And I have my credential if you want to get some. Any questions? You mentioned this was an 11 year project. Are you completed? Well, uh, for, it was 11 year project, right? For almost everybody. In my particular case, we, we expanded for up to 15 years. Okay? Yeah, but uh, normally NSF does what they do. You got a grant, they try to keep funding you, okay? If you're doing a good job, okay? But normally the, the NSF cycle are 10 years. 10 years, yeah. Right. Yeah. In any case, I'm available, you see, just to disseminate this program, any part of that into any university. This is a federal grant, so I'm supposed to do that. Okay. If you are interested in, in develop some kind of proposal or program that will fund a STEM student. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.